a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 19. I am your host, The Evangelical Norm, and this, it is Tuesday, get my days mixed up, it is Tuesday, November 12th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from persecution.org. International Christian Concern has learned that on November 11th, 2019, gunmen affiliated with the Islamic State attacked a car known to be carrying Armenian Christian leaders who were traveling from a Syrian city of Kamishli to Deir el-Zor. The attack left two priests murdered a wounded, and wounded a deacon. ISIS has officially claimed responsibility for the incident. The attack on the vehicle took place as the three as three nearly simultaneous car, simultaneous car bombings occurred in the city of Kemishli, which is well known for its religious and ethnic diversity. One of the explosions occurred near a Chaldean church. The Armenian church leaders were traveling to Deir Ezzor to inspect an Armenian Catholic church, which has suffered damage because of the Syrian conflict. Father Hannah Baidu, also known as Father Abra Abraham Petoyan, was killed instantly during the attack. His son, known as Father Hovsep Petoyan, reportedly succumbed to his injuries in the hospital. The deacon, Fatisano, from the Armenian El Haseka Church, was wounded. Quote, An armed group at the entrance of the Syrian city of Deir Ezzor was targeting a car that was carrying the father, unquote, reported the Assyrian Monitor for Human Rights. Quote, This armed group targeted and killed the priest and his father while the third person was injured. Father and his companions were headed to Deir El Zor city this Monday morning on a mission to follow the to follow the status of of Wafk and of the Armenian Catholic Church. Unquote. The incident was confirmed by the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Video footage obtained by Hawar News shows that the car used by the priest had a special tag in its front window, which acknowledged it was traveling for business with the Armenian Catholic Church. The video shows significant frontal damage to the vehicle, placing the two front seat occupants within a direct line of fire. Pastor of the Armenian Catholic community of Kamishli, Priest Hovsep Petoyan, and his father, Priest Abraham Petoyan, were traveling in a vehicle en route to Deir Ezzor when terrorists opened gunfire on their car and killed them, stated the Armenian press. The Armenian Catholic priests were heading to inspect the condition of a Catholic church, end quote. ISIS officials, a mock media outlet, claimed responsibility, saying, quote, two Christian priests were killed today. ISIS shot them down, unquote. ISIS was officially declared militarily defeated by Sir in Syria this past March. However, reprisal attacks during the October death of ISIS leader al-Baghdadi in Syria were expected. Turkey's invasion of northern Syria also prompted fears that would allow opportunities for ISIS militants to take advantage of the resulting chaos. This is the first deadly incident since its military defeat in which ISIS has successfully targeted church leaders in the Levant. So, uh, again, we can argue Catholicism, Christianity another time. We'll save that for an episode of The Master's Dog. But these men were targeted by ISIS. Uh, by Ars uh, yeah, there's a Freudian slip. By ISIS because of their faith in Christ. Whether their faith is legit or orthodox is not what I want to discuss. It's the simple fact that because if ISIS is attacking unorthodox Christians, then it's, it's a matter of time before they start reaching the, the orthodox believers. Um, and again, I don't want to split hairs on orthodoxy in this podcast. These men were targeted because they held to a faith in the name of Jesus Christ. I would, again, if, if it were Mormons worshiping a false Christ, I would still acknowledge it's a persecution based on the belief in, in Jesus, so or a Jesus. 
Uh, we'll put it that way. So this is in this is endemic to the the Christian world at large, whether Orthodox or not. So again, I just I need to make that distinction because I'm the guy that in in another podcast will be talking about how how Catholics are not Orthodox, and so how do we consider this Christian persecution? This is persecution on those who who worship the name Christ, whether Orthodox or not. So we want to pray for them, and again. We don't want anybody, whether they're Orthodox, especially if they're not Orthodox, to die. Um, this is a tragedy that these men are dead. Um, dying, believing false false uh, attributes or false gospels, believing that they have to work their way to salvation, uh, negates uh, the grace that God gives. Again, it's the, the, the aspect of God, Jesus plus anything equals nothing. If you think you can add to your salvation in Christ by working towards it, you have nothing because you're not repentant and, and trusting in Christ. So these men very well could have died believing they were going to heaven, targeted because they hold a faith in Christ, could have gone to hell. That's a harsh statement, and it, it's almost contraindicated to the what we are where uh, our intent is for this podcast. But it's truth, and so we need to. Our prayer for this situation is that ISIS would be defeated in some way, shape, or form. Whether that means the return of American forces to, I mean, we took out Al Baghdadi. Um, we took out his second in command. They've raised up a third. And now they are continuing to attack people and to kill people because of their, their hatred for Christ. The persecution is, is based on the, the persecutor's hatred of the Lord, um, not the validity of the persecuted's faith, if that makes any sense. So our prayer is that ISIS be defeated, that God sovereignly wipe out this threat to the Christian community, both Orthodox and not. And so that should be what we are praying for the families of these men who are, were murdered. Um, I find it odd that you have a Catholic priest and his son didn't know that was something that happened but obviously these are this is a different than a, a Roman Catholic situation so these men had families these men obviously had wives um, and so we need to be praying for them for peace to come upon them for the Holy Spirit to draw them to Christ um, and that that the threat will be eliminated in this area and that people can worship God as they see fit, again, whether orthodox or unorthodox, that they could worship Christ without the threat of death. And I would, I would pray that for, for any group. I pray any group would be, you know, whether it be Mormon or Muslim or Hindu or, or anything, that they be able to worship without the threat of death. Because again, if we're killing off those who are not saved, their, their judgment is sealed. We want people to be able to worship as they, as they, without threat of violence, so that they can hear the gospel and be saved, if that makes sense to you. I mean, again, that's, that is the purpose of everything. It's why we end every episode with the words that we end it with, because the gospel is the core, and we want all people to hear it. And so we want all people to be free to worship without the threat of violence or persecution, so that they can either proclaim the gospel or hear the gospel and that that would be where God receives his glory. So let's pray for these, these, the families of these priests, the, the members of their churches, um, this deacon who was injured, uh, that he would, he would be, uh, quickly recover from his injuries and pray that, that God would provide a way to eliminate this threat, which is ISIS in this area. Uh, next we're gonna, again, we're still just, we're praying for Leah Sharabu. 
uh, yesterday was the 89th Sunday. Um, and this is where on, on one of the pages for, for Leah, if I can find it, that's not what I wanted. Um, one of the, the, just let's pray for Leah. They're, they're tracking by Sunday. So yesterday was the 89th Sunday that she's been in captivity, um, and that they prayed for her to be released. And we just need to continue to pray, um, pray for her family, uh, for peace, pray for her, for courage to maintain. I mean, every, every day she's in captivity is another opportunity for them to try to physically um, what is the word that I'm looking for? <laughs> persuade her, physically persuade her through torture and violence to renounce her faith in Christ. And we need to pray that God spiritually strengthens her, that she would stand firm. To continue to stand firm in her faith. I can't imagine just the the sheer torment of knowing, waking up, and, and, and again, I don't know what Boko Haram is doing to her or this offshoot of Boko Haram. Um, it's kind of a, a mix-up between Boko Haram and an Islamic State. It's this southwestern group. I don't know. Um, it's pointless to even consider who they are. They're, they're monsters that are holding a young girl captive, a 16-year-old girl at this point, um, who was 14 when she was taken. Um, and I can't imagine what they're doing to her. I can't imagine what she's going through. And, and only her faith in Christ and her knowledge that, that again, it, it, the salvation that Jesus offers is not about, it's not what the, the prosperity churches and prosperity ministers offer. It's not about what we have right now. It's what we are looking forward to in eternity. And that is what strengthens us. It's the fact that Jesus died to forgive us of our sins, not to make our life more relaxed or, or rosy or, or pick your adjective. Jesus died so we would be reconciled to the Father so that when, judge, when, when death comes, that our judgment is laid on him and not on ourselves. And so let's just keep praying for Leah and keep praying for her family. Um, that brings us to our world watch list for this week. Uh, number 19, which is Laos. Um, Laos facts, uh, region is Asia. Persecution type is communist and post-communist oppression. The persecution level is very high. The population in Laos is 6,961,000. Of those, about 225,000 of them are Christian. The main religion is Buddhism. The government is a communist state. And the leader is President Bunang Vorachith. I probably pronounced that last name horribly. Uh, converts to Christianity face the most severe forms of Christian persecution. Abandoning Buddhism or tribal animist beliefs is seen as a betrayal to family members and the community, which fuels the per perception that Christians essentially excommunicate themselves from the Buddhist animist community. Consequently, believers are persecuted by their immediate and or extended family. Usually one Laotian household is composed of three generations under one roof and by local authorities who often stir up the community who often stir up the community. Christians must take extreme caution to avoid negative reactions from government officials. In rural areas, ordinary residents watch Christians with suspicion and sometimes even drive them out of their villages. In November of 2018, police in Laos arrested a 78-year-old grandmother and three other Christians while they were worshiping, according to Human Rights Watch, for Laos religious freedom. Police also evicted them from their homes and property. Upon hearing multiple reports of people coming to Christ through local evangelist healing ministry, he was healed and began healing others. Police targeted him for capture and arrest. He was sentenced to five months in prison. The 2017 decree on associations law has already been leveraged primarily against Christians, shutting down and limiting believers' gatherings, especially in rural areas. The law requires that any gatherings, political, civic, or religious, must first get approval from government uh, from multiple government offices. Prayer points for Laos. 
pray with Laotian Christians that both courage and wisdom, for both courage and wisdom to know when and where to gather for prayer and worship. Pray for protection as believers as, of believers as violence against them increases. Ask God to give them discernment as they pursue him. Pray for religious freedom to increase, that more house churches will have the opportunity to register and operate legally. Ask God to continue to draw Laotians to himself in miraculous ways that lead them to share their testimony and make disciples who make disciples. Pray for Christians, discern, Christians' discernment in witnessing to their Buddhist neighbors and family. Pray their efforts would be well received. Let's pray. Father, again, as we do every day, I just praise you that, that you've given us a platform where multiple people from miles and miles apart can come together uh, and join in praying for our brothers and sisters around the world and even separated by time, <laughs> time frames, Lord, that some are watching this uh, today, some will watch this days from now, uh, and Lord, that, that we still join together praying under one purpose, um, and, and you hear those prayers simultaneously, no matter how far apart they are, are said, um, both in space and time. Because again, God, you are, are not limited by space or time. And so we praise you for that. We praise you for the, the gospel that you've given, that, that your son, that Christ came and paid the penalty for our sin, not so we could have great and wonderful things in this life, Lord, but that we could be assured of eternity uh, as, we, as we step out of this life. Um, and so, we, again, we praise you for that. And we praise you that our brothers and sisters around the world are willing to stand firm in their faith because of the nature of that gospel. Lord, that it's not that, that, that horrifying uh, circumstances and situations do not drive us away from you, but Lord, it, uh, it causes us to cling tighter to you. And so we pray for these, these men in Egypt, or not in Egypt, in, uh, in Syria, Lord. We pray for these men in Syria who were attacked um, by ISIS, um, the men who were killed, the one who was injured. Lord, we pray that, that you bring healing to the man who was injured. We pray that you bring comfort to the family of those who were murdered. Lord, we pray that you bring justice to those who murdered. And Lord, that your gospel would be known, that your truth would be proclaimed, and that those around would have a true belief in, in what your gospel is, that they, need to, to, that they are sinners in need of a Savior, that they would repent and put their trust in your works and not their own, and that you would use situ situations and circumstances like this, Lord, that you would use them to draw people to yourself, that people would see... Um, Again, others that are willing to stand in the midst of persecution and that, that would that you would use that through your spirit to draw them to yourself, Lord. We lift up Leah again to you, God, and we pray for her protection uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, Lord. I pray that you continue to strengthen her faith in you, that she is daily filled with the courage to say, I will not recant. I will not renounce my Savior, Lord, and that, that only by your Spirit can she, can she stand in that place. I pray for, for peace for her mother and her, her father. Lord, I pray for her family. Um, and God, I pray for those who are holding her in captivity, that in the same vein, that, that they would see her willingness to stand firm in her faith and that that would cause them to look to you and see your truth and to see your gospel and that they would repent and put their trust in you. God, I even pray that, that the salvation of her captors would be her freedom. That even now that you would begin to move on the hearts of the men who have, captived, have held her captive and that, that as you save those men, Lord, as you draw them to yourself and that they, they turn to you in repentance and faith, that they would be the vehicle that, that sets her free. And we pray for that to come quickly, Lord. And Father, I put, lift up our brothers and sisters in, in Laos. We pray for um, we pray for, for courage and wisdom. Uh, again, as they as they gather in different places, 
Lord, I, I pray that, that you would just help them to know, to discern uh, the place where they can safely meet. Um, and Lord, that, that if that place becomes unsafe, that again, that you would strengthen their faith, that they would be willing to stand firm in their faith uh, in the midst of, of whatever persecution comes. We pray for uh, protection as violence against believers increases. Um, again, ask for, for discernment for these people uh, to find safe places to, to seek after and worship you. Um, God, I, I, I pray for courage to, to worship openly. I pray that this would not just drive people into hiding, but that it would give courage to worship openly. And I know that sounds uh, contradictory to, to, to their safe keeping, but Lord, I pray that, that, that you would encourage them, that they would be willing to stand in the midst of, of persecution to proclaim your gospel, and that you would use that to draw the other Laotians to yourself um, as they see these men willing to proclaim your gospel, even though it may cost them their very lives. And we pray that, that you use that as a, as a witness to their Buddhist neighbors in the community, that those, that those Buddhists would, would recognize that, that you are greater than anything that they have worshipped, and that they would turn to you in repentance and faith, Lord. And that in all these things, in all these situations, with with the uh, persecution in Syria under ISIS, with the, the captivity of Leah, with uh, persecution of our brothers and sisters in Laos, Lord, that you would receive glory and that you would be glorified and that you would be magnified and your gospel would be uh, intensified and proclaimed more and more because of these things, Lord. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Again, thank you guys for, for being part of this. I, I appreciate um, everybody who listens um, to the audio versions, which you can get on Google, um, iTunes, or uh, Spotify. Uh, I appreciate you sharing those with other people um, who are of like mind that want to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, who want to be aware of what's happening to them um, in these different situations. If you have friends that, that want to come, bring them to uh, the Fifth Seal Facebook page um, where they can join and be part of that group. I give out different other different things throughout the year on that and notifications and so on, as well as this video um, and all the prayer points about the different countries. Uh, and as well, you can go to The Evangelical Norm on YouTube and subscribe to the podcast there and get all the different um different parts of, of content I can't even talk anymore all the different uh, uh, aspects of the podcast that I do there and all the content that is released there so go uh, subscribe and, and hit the notifications button on YouTube and uh, as always preach the gospel at all times use words they're necessary until tomorrow Soli Deo Gloria mm -hmm.